Of course, we are in an election year. Americans will witness a rematch between President Biden and former President Donald Trump. And you might be wondering the impact an election might have on your finances. Well, here with more on investing during times of change is Nora Youssef, RBC Wealth Management Financial Advisor and Senior Vice President. Thank you for your time this morning. So usually we don't tend to see the markets move a lot, depending because they usually have picked, picked, what, picked their sides in terms of being slow and steady and, and really having a lot more foresight. But if you're looking at your portfolio, what should you be bracing yourself for? Well, just know a lot of people, when they hear election year, they get fearful and are tempted to put money under the mattress. But know that election years are surprisingly a positive thing for markets. Uh, in fact, they tend to follow a similar pattern. And that pattern is that as the market is leading up to the election, it gets volatile as emotions run high and headline noise reaches a fever pitch. But by the end of the year, once a president is elected and the market gains certainty, which it likes, since 1928, the market has ended higher than it started 75% of the time. And if you're looking since the 1950s, the stock market has ended higher than it started 83% of the time. And it's typically up over 7%. Uh, and the same is true, regardless of a Republican or Democrat winning, Trump or not Trump, controversial election year or not. We've been through them before. So in general, just know that it's the Fed earnings and where we are in the economic cycle that moves markets, not presidents. So in short, just don't let how you feel about politics affect how you feel about investing. And do we tend to see people investing from some of their political beliefs? We do, we do, and it's unfortunate. You know, when it comes to this uh, political cycle, when you think about it, a presence, again, don't affect the S&P 500 earnings typically or the $28 trillion economy that we have. And, and during this economic cycle, sure, this presidency, you could argue, well, the, talks, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, that's going to be expiring at the end of 2025. And that's true. Uh, and that likely will move the markets uh, temporarily, but longer term, it really uh, presents have a very minimal effect on the market. And of course, you, you mentioned the Federal Reserve there. A little more hesitancy we're seeing from investors about the, the rate cuts, the pace of rate cuts that they were hoping for this year. What should people do then if they were expecting these rate cuts based on that news? And then now they're really not so sure. Yeah. So what I would say is don't risk your cash having FOMO because the rates have been standing steady and they're likely next going to be going down. And so this window of opportunity to essentially cash in on these rates at 22 year highs is going to be closing. So if you haven't yet, make sure you've locked in your cash uh, at bonds or CDs or treasury bills, fixed income, and go out longer term as long as you don't think you're going to need that money, whether it's one year, two, five, or even 10 years, because you don't want to wait another 22 years to put money at work. And so for some of these perhaps riskier assets, is now a good time to do that when you already have, you know, it's, there are global elections going on everywhere and still waiting to see what happens with interest rate cuts. What sort of mindset should people enter the market with now? You know, always keep a long term approach when it comes to the market. Um, you know, even wars, for instance, I mean, we have a lot of change going on. We've got the election, we've got wars, we've got interest rate changes. Uh, but know that even with wars, uh, you know, as as a you know, humanitarian aspect of things, of course, it has a devastating effect uh, from that standpoint. When it comes to the markets, again, it's a short term effect. So it's good in all of these cases to keep a long-term perspective. If you've already invested, and assuming you've got quality holdings that are diversified, you want to stay the course and don't get rattled. If you have some cash on the sidelines, consider a dip, a uh, potential opportunity to do some buying. But all that, uh, take with a grain of salt and be weary of trying to time the market. Because if you miss just the 10 best days in the market over the past 20 years of the S&P 500, for example, you could cut your returns in half. Instead of getting over 10% returns over time, you're only going to be getting around 5% if you miss those 10 best days. So as tempting as it is, try to avoid timing the market because it's time in the market, not timing the market that counts. 
Indeed, got to keep a steady hand uh, when things are looking rocky. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Nora Youssef, RBC Wealth Management Vice President and Financial Advisor. Thank you so much. Pleasure.